subject today is a season to pray and wait. A season to pray and wait. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. A season to pray and wait. Turning on the news these days can easily be overwhelming given the amount of suffering in the world. I'm sure you've heard about fires in the West, the rains and floods in the East and South. I'm sure you've heard about the mass shootings and natural disasters everywhere. It seems that violent conflict is just around the corner. And no matter where you are, you are not exempt. There's something going on even here in Lincoln Parish. And with all that is going on, if we are not careful, we can develop what is called compassion fatigue. Compassion fatigue is an indifference to charitable appeals on behalf of those who are suffering. You just get tired of something else. Every time you look up, it's something else. You need to give to this cause and that cause and another thing and another thing and you just become numb to the appeals. No matter how horrifying the situation, how egregious the act that has been committed, we are just sick and tired of folk asking us for money. We are sick and tired of folk asking us to show up for a rally. We are sick and tired of all that people want us to do. It seems that whatever we do, it is never enough. And then because of the circumstances that we live in, even things that are usually peaceful become crazy. I was listening to the city council a day ago and uh, I, 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 I looked with interest at the confusion dealing with the rental of Bramlin Park. It was a simple thing. All Chris said was, I need to see the policy for rental of the park because some alphas wanted to rent the park and they were denied. So he just wanted to see the policy to make sure that they would be in compliance. Now that in itself is a simple thing. However, when Chris showed up, he didn't show up simple. He showed up disturbed. He showed up determined to get some justice for the students of Gramlin. And because of the season that we're in, every now and then things can really, really take a turn for the worse. James, in his book, that little four, five chapters, talks about this tongue of ours. And he says the tongue is, uh, can, be, can start a fire that is great and that will raise. The tongue can, can set, you can say things that set everybody off, cause peace to leave, disturbance to enter. James said that that we can't control our tongue. So we need to make sure we control our emotions. <laughs> because if you let your emotions become too attached to the conversation, it's going to get out of hand because the tongue is ready to set things on fire. And so it got set on fire. It got crazy. What was a simple request became confusing. Lord have mercy. And I say it is because of the season that we're in. It is a season where people's uh, ability to be cordial and civil is tested by all of the other things that are going on in the world. With all that we are going through with discrimination, 
with uh, demarginalization. The last thing we want to do is be marginalized by our own people. Come on, somebody. We're in a black city. We're in a black town. We in charge. So when we have residents who have issues, we ought to be the first to try to comply with their request because we've been waiting for 400 years to have our own and be in charge of ourselves. But yet when we get in positions of power and we, we see our people really suffering because of our inaction, we tend not to want to address the issue and justice then does not become a major concern of ours. Lord have mercy. I think the same whole thing got out of kilter simply because there was no written policy. That when you make an application, the determination is subjective based on whether I want you to use the park or not, based on whether you are a political friend to me or not. It, there, there are so many things that go into what we do as a city and as a people until it is almost as if some are in and others are out. And if you're on the outside, you're in trouble because you won't find any justice when you make your appeal. It is a terrible thing to see people get out of sorts over something such as the rental of Gremlin Park. We got bigger fish to fry than that. There are more problems we need to resolve than that. That should not be the trigger for getting things done in this city. But I don't know if you ever saw the movie, uh, uh, what was it, Crossroads? And, and, and Blind Dog Footman said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> he was talking about the black cops that stole their money and harassed them and kicked them across the bridge. He would have expected that from the white cop, but not the black cop. And so when he was treated that way, he just said, well, Captain, I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. It doesn't matter what your skin color is if you're not sensitive to what people need and to who people are, you too can become an oppressor. So we have to be careful about that. And, 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 I, and I'm bringing it up simply because we got to do better. And I also bring it up because I want us to see that there are some things we cannot control. We cannot control those things that we are not in control of. Chris was not in control of the policy. He was only able to make the city aware that no policy existed and to ask for justice by allowing the city to write the policy so it would be fair to everyone. But see, when you get upset about things that you have no control over, when you worry about things that you have no control control over, your worrying is not going to result in a positive outcome because the things that you can't control, God is not asking you to control, nor should you want to control. You want to be stress-free. So there are two things, and I'm almost done now. There are two things that we need to be aware of as members of Lewis Temple. And the first thing is that there are things that are out of control in this environment in which we live. And we always sing that hymn of our whole to God's unchanging hand. What does it say? Time is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And you have to find comfort in these words because when you're making appeals and when you have situations of which you are not in control, it, that means it is a God situation. And you have to know when you're facing a God situation, 
you do what you can do, but then you've got to know how to turn it over into the hands of an almighty God and get some sleep. <laughs> that's, that's what the scripture says. You got to learn to get some rest because some things are not in your control. I mean, they got to the point of threatening that the mayor wouldn't be reelected. Uh, Councilwoman Miller wouldn't be reelected. We're taking folks down in this election. It was something to behold. All because Chris felt helpless because he realized he really didn't have control. He realized that he really couldn't make the situation right because that was not given to him. That is under the auspices of city council. And no matter how much you rant and rave, you really can't do anything until actions are made by the council. Now you can vote and you can put people out, but who you put in doesn't mean the system is going to change. We see that in the political process now. We are black people are looking for things to change, but the more things change, the more they stay the same. And so then you can vote and you can get other people in office, but there's something about that office. It is a system. And when you're working within a system, it doesn't matter really who you are in the position, you still have to go according to the rules of that system. And the only one who can change that system is God. God will move if you do these two things that I'm gonna tell you right now, then I'm gonna quit to next week because I got communion. The first thing that you gotta know how to do is put yourself in a posture of prayer. The scripture said in Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, take your petition, your legal petition before the throne of God because God is the judge who is sitting on the bench and God has the authority and the power to make a decision on any circumstance and situation that you're going through. But you've got to know when it is a God situation. You got to know when to put yourself in a position of prayer because prayer is God's instrument given to us to face any circumstance or situation in our lives, no matter how uncertain things seem to be. Prayer is the key. Let, let me point out to you that you, you can't control that which is outside your control. Worrying about it will not resolve it. But Jesus said to his disciples, some things that we encounter in life do not get resolved except by fasting and prayer. And there are some demonic entities that work through corrupt systems that make sure justice is not delivered. And if you know you are facing spiritual wickedness in high places, you know that's a posture of prayer. You know that only God can deal with that. And so some of us sometimes want to go and act like we God, put ourselves in position as God, and we're determined we're going to make something happen when in fact we're just exhausting ourselves, frustrating ourselves, and we walk away angrier than we were when we came. And most of the time we're promising people, come with me, I'm going to show you how to get it done. <laughs> I'm going to tell them people something, watch this. And you can talk all you want to till you're blue in the face and you're still not going to get the result you're looking for because this thing has to be resolved in a different form and a different fashion. Amen. And I do know how that works. So put yourself in a position of prayer. Know that God is waiting for you to petition him so that he can influence the outcome. Somebody wrote a hymn, said, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell who? Jesus. 
Don't be, don't be bold, don't be proud. It's out of your control, take it to Jesus. Just say it looks like a job for El Shaddai, and that means the almighty God. God created us, he created everything. He is not without resources to get involved in your situation and in the situation of the city. So when situations and circumstances are greater than you can handle, assume the posture of prayer. Make your prayer and supplication known to God. I remember when I had COVID a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't talk. Phone was ringing, I couldn't answer. I wanted to talk, I sure wanted to talk. Lord knows, I, I, had, I just couldn't talk for two days. And I'm a preacher, so you know, talking is important. <laughs> and I was an elder at that time, and folks were calling me about the conference, I couldn't say a mumbling word. God shut me down. All I could do was lay there and hurt and talk to God in my mind. And so I realized that as I lie there and couldn't talk, couldn't speak, things were still moving. People were still doing what people do. Folk were still going where folk go. I mean, my being there, unable to speak, didn't stop anything. People made up their own minds. <laughs> People solved their own problems. I was not non-essential, but I was not essential either. People were put in a position where they had to make their own decisions, and they did. So every now and then, we need to step back and allow people time to be with themselves and see themselves and see whether they're right or wrong and allow God to talk with them and to deal with them. Sometimes, every now and then, we all need to be quiet, not be the answer for everybody's a problem, not try to fix everything, especially things that are out of your control. Put it in the hands of the Lord. The second thing, and I'm almost done. The second thing, that we do in this season is wait. Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And let me, let me read it this way. They that wait, the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait, the Lord shall renew their strength because we do get compassion fatigue. We do get weary, we do get tired. But if we wait, the Lord will renew our strength. When you're in facing these uncert uncertain times, you gotta learn how to wait. When you know your strength is small, you gotta learn how to wait. And this word wait means worship. They that worship the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength. They that get up enough strength to make it to the house of God or to make it to their bathroom or their bedroom, wherever they are, and they lift up their hands and worship, God will strengthen you. If you worship God, whether it's here at Lewis Temple or anywhere you go, God will renew your strength through worship. That's what the word means. Worship the Lord when things aren't going your way. Worship the Lord when you don't understand what's going on. Worship God because he is faithful. When COVID-19 gets worse instead of better, wait. When city council and city residents can't agree, wait. When your engagement of the circumstances only makes them worse, don't quit give up, roll over, or play dead. Rather, wait. David said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Let me put it this way. Worship the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, worship, I say the Lord. Worship, because when you worship God, God never fails. When you worship God, God shows up and shows out. When you worship 
God, I wish somebody had asked for a praise break in the middle of the meeting and said, hold on, we need to put this before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I just need a point of personal privilege. I worship you, Lord, that you will resolve this situation. Do it, oh God. And others want you to let go, want you to walk away, learn how to pray and wait. Tell the devil, devil, you can't push me around anymore. I'm worshiping. I'm waiting on God. I trust God when I can't trace God. I trust God when there seems to be no resolution in sight. I'm going to worship because I'm going to be like Job who said, all oh, my appointed time, will I wait? Until my chains come. He said, I'm going to worship God when I'm sick. I'm going to worship God when I'm well. I'm going to worship God when I can't find him. I'm going to worship God when I don't agree with him. I'm going to worship God because I know God knows what I'm going through. God knows the way I take. God knows what I'm going through. And God will show up. God will show up. Let me tell you, Lewis Temple, don't you leave your post. Don't quit your assignment because you're discouraged and stressed out because you're human and you're not perfect and you're always trying to do better, but you seem to be getting worse. Don't quit your assignment because that's not under your control. The word of God said it is God who gives you the will to do of his good pleasure. He gives you the will to do it. Then he gives you the strength to do it. Don't give up on yourself because God will never give up on you. He's able to put it in your heart so you can walk it out with your feet. Don't let the devil intimidate you. Don't let the devil tell you this is hopeless. You might as well quit. The no, no action coming from what you're doing. You might as well resign. You might as well walk out the door. There's no hope for City Hall. There's no hope for resolution. There's no hope for conciliation or collaboration. Just quit. But when God puts you in an assignment, you got to learn to put yourself in a position of prayer and worship, waiting on the Lord. Let him tell you which way to go. Don't let your friends tell you. Don't let your family tell you. Wait on the Lord. God will come see about you. I know I'm right about it. Wait on the Lord. People sympathize with you, but wait on the Lord. People care about you, but wait on the Lord. People think they know what's best for you, but wait on the Lord because God will speak to you as an individual. He'll give you exactly what you need. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word today. We ask that during this season of uncertainty and confusion, that we will put ourselves in a posture of prayer, waiting for you to clad if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven, you would heal the land, you would forgive their sins. God, you know that we are dust. You know that we are frail and you do not regard us as anything but what we are and who we are. So God, we ask that you would settle these situations, especially this situation the city of Gramlin and the residents of Gramlin. Let us, O oh God, follow your word that says, do all things decently and in order. And whatever personal challenges these who are on the sound of my voice have in their lives, teach them which way to walk. Show them which way to go. We bless you and we praise your name now. All God's people said amen and amen. What a mighty God we serve. It is.